everybody, Ms. Amy here with the BWC Online Bible Study. I'm coming to you with Romans chapter 8 today. Um, I am out running around and had to drop some stuff off at the church. And so um, I thought while I was sitting out here that I would go ahead and do our Bible study just so that um, because I like being here because I miss being at church. <laughs> and so that means that I'm looking a little crazy today because um, today is the going out and grocery shopping day. And so um, so that's, you know, hair not looking great and, and face mask and, and all the greatness of the time that we're going through right now. But um, so I wanted to talk to you guys today about this Romans chapter 8. And Romans chapter 8 is um, talking about meat sacrifice to idols, which may seem like when you read it, like what in the world does any of that have to do with us? Because, you know, here in... Um, Benton, Bossier, Shreveport, you know, we're not really having a whole lot of idol worship and, um, and sacrifice, um, sacrifice and meat and, and all these other things that, that they were doing during that time. But the heart of this scripture is still important to us now. And it's that we do not need to be causing other believers to stumble that um that we need to care about our brother that might have a struggle that maybe we don't have and that we need to set ourselves aside sometimes and um and do the right thing to actually care about another person rather than just be right you know um sometimes we can be right about something you know they were right about the idol the the sacrifice and the idols at the temple like you could you know that the idol wasn't real and so it didn't matter if they eat the meat because the idol was fake and and they could eat that meat freely and there was no big deal but their brother in Christ had been saved out of pagan idolatry and had um taken every bit of everything that they were to um to come out of that situation and um and so it hurt their heart to eat that meat that was sacrificed to idols because they had been so wrapped up in that idolatry and in that culture during that time and um and so the heart of this scripture is that we need to care about our weaker brother we need to care about somebody um and not even weaker like somebody that um that's had a struggle that maybe we haven't had you know um I um I don't drink alcohol and it is because I would never want to cause a weaker brother to stumble you know my grandmother was um was an alcoholic and she um and she pushed every single person away in her life with that alcoholism and um and if someone were to see me to sit and have a glass of wine um then because I'm in ministry then if it's okay for me to do it then it means it's okay for them to do it because that's how people think and um and, and that's how some people will take things in. And I would never want to cause a weaker brother to stumble. Somebody that maybe is struggling with alcoholism and trying to let something go that um, is destroying their life. You know, um, and some may say, well, you know, it, it, it would never destroy my life. But then you know people who, who it has destroyed their lives. It has completely turned their lives upside down. You know, my grandmother, um, I was the only person taking care of her my husband and I um my mom and dad weren't able because of my mom's health and so at the end of her life um it was just me that was there because she had pushed every other single person away from her and um and isolated herself and when it came to it you know the Lord had great grace and mercy on her and um and I was there to show her love and compassion and kindness that maybe she hadn't showed to other people, but I could see the end result of, um, of a life of, um, in her younger years that had pushed everyone else away. And so it is that we don't want to cause our weaker brother to stumble. We don't want to be the reason that somebody else makes, um, makes a wrong choice. You know, you think about all this COVID-19 right now and, um, and you see a lot of people out doing things that they shouldn't be doing because they're not afraid because they don't think that the virus will affect them. But 
what about the person that it will affect? If you, um, if you contract this virus and it doesn't make you that sick, but then you come in contact with someone else who has a weaker immune system or whose body just doesn't handle the virus well and, um, and they die because of it. You know, we really need to care about other people. We need to not just think about ourselves. And, um, and we need to be showing love because um, it's not always enough just to be right. You know, you can have a lot of knowledge. And, you know, I'm not saying don't have knowledge. I work a lot of hours a week studying scripture and um, preparing for all the things that God's got in store for me. And... Um, the things that he wants me to do. I spend a lot of time, um, you know, just gaining knowledge and it's not wrong to have knowledge, but when you don't have love mixed in with that knowledge, then what good is the knowledge? And so, um, and so it is that we need to be showing love and compassion toward other people that we need to be caring about them. We're not always going to be perfect. You know, we're going to slip and fall and make mistakes, um, along the way. But at the same time, you know, when our heart is set on Jesus and, um, and our intention is out of love, then, um, then it is that we're going to be on a better path that's going to make a difference for somebody else. So you could really make a difference for somebody else from the example that you're setting. That you could um, that you could be a spark and a light that would lead someone in a right direction that would bless their lives and help them to get on a right path that um, would bless generations. You know, when, when someone turns their heart toward the Lord and they um, and they um, set their focus on God, you know, it's not just that person that gets affected, it's their children and their children's children. And, um, you know, that, that is such a blessing to get to be part of something like that when, um, when you get to be part of something that God's doing. And, um, and so I just want to leave you guys with that today. Look, there's your church or our church, my church, um, and God's church. <laughs> so, um, so I just want to leave you guys with that today and I will meet you back again in, um, first Corinthians chapter nine. You guys be blessed and have a great day.